Hi there, welcome to this course on machine learning and data science with AWS. My name is Harshit and I'm instructor for this class. In this course, you will learn various cloud services on AWS that can be used to build machine learning models using AWS NLP or natural language processing. Moreover, you would also learn various services on AWS that can be used for data science and analytics. Here, I would be teaching you with my colleague Pranjal who would cover the machine learning part and I would cover data science and analytics part. Here you will learn about AWS Glue that can be used to create crawlers for extracting data sets from a source and find its schema. After it, uh, the crawler has extracted the data set and the schema, we can create the Athena database that can be used for data analytics using SQL and more. Then you will learn about AWS QuickSight that is used for data preparation and data visualization that are two important parts of data science. And after that you will learn about developing various NLP tasks such as sentiment analysis, named entity recognition and translation and much more. So if you are curious to learn these data science and machine learning skills on cloud, start learning right now. See you in the class. Hi there, welcome to this lesson where you're going to learn about creating an Amazon S3 bucket where you can store your files on the cloud. So let's start with this. Here just go to the services and browse over storage service and here the first service is Amazon S3. So S3 is short form of simple storage service. That's a block storage and here you can create a bucket. So what is a bucket? Bucket is a logical folder or directory where you keep all your content. So bucket is the abstract form of, uh, it's an abstract logical entity. So you can create multiple buckets on Amazon S3. Uh, just provide with a name. You have to select an Amazon region where this bucket will be stored, your data will be stored. So you can choose from various Amazon cloud regions like Virginia and other places and next uh, you may choose to block all kind of public access to this bucket directory or you can retain some access. So if you want your bucket to be available on the public domains it can be made available otherwise you, you want to block you can block it and you can only access internally with your own cloud account and then you can select the encryption or advanced setting. You can choose to have an object lock and once you are done just hit the create bucket and it will be available to you and here we can find there are multiple buckets that's already created and here we have created this Athena data 101 and this is a bucket for here and once you open the bucket you got various properties the file permissions to access this thing you got various matrices you can select this thing and you can any time edit some settings like public access you can customize it later on if you customize you have to confirm otherwise just leave it here maybe after you have created your bucket you want it to be available by public domain you can just set it there you can have the cross origin resource sharing enabled you can find a metrics here for performance indicators and other things you can select the access points and here just go to the objects if you want to create other folders or subfolders and upload different files here. So if you want to store some files on the Amazon cloud, S3 is the way to go. Even when you want to create an integrated application that requires some sort of data, uh, it could be linked with S3. Say if you want to host a website and you have a database, you can upload your data set on S3 bucket, you can add multiple files as well that would contain the images, uh, data set, text, other information, PDFs and other things and then you can use this Amazon resource name or S3 ARN and it could be connected to other services on the cloud like Glue, you can create a crawler with Amazon Glue and Athena, you can connect it to Redshift or DynamoDB databases and other places as well, other services. It could be used with a lambda as a trigger and other things. 
here we have uploaded this file that's csv format and we got this destination uh, link that is s3 and here we got uh, this directory for this thing and here you got multiple kind of storage classes that you can choose if you want to have access your data very frequently you can choose the standard or if you want your data for archival purpose you can have the glacier and for the moderate levels you can have these things say for example if you want uh, your website uh, data to be available multiple times in a single day from across the globe it is very frequently accessed uh, then you can put it with a standard function and if you want it just for the record keeping you can keep it for the glacier so if your data is kept in the glacier uh, read write permission to that, that bucket will be very minimal and you cannot edit it for certain parameters and it would be safe it would be considered as a vault and you can create multiple s3 bucket so it is one of the core services on aws and it is very widely used with other cloud services so once you are on the aws dashboard you can customize your bucket and go to actions and find various options so try to create your own s3 bucket keep learning and keep moving ahead hi welcome back friends here in this lesson you're going to learn about creating a crawler in amazon view so let's start with this so what is a crawler crawler is a kind of job that is defined in amazon glue it crawls through the databases and buckets that are stored in amazon s3 or other storage forms and it will create a table in amazon glue it have the same schema as the file that is stored and after it has created a table in glue you can perform various operations such as etl operations extract transform load using sql queries on this table so just go to the amazon glue service you can search the aws dashboard and you would find it here and just go to the crawler to create a new crawler on the left hand side you will find various stepwise options that we have to perform in order to create a crawler so first we need to provide the name for this new crawler so this crawler could be connected to various kind of data sources in order to produce a table so it will be very handy thing say if you have your data stored in form of some csv files you could have thousands of csv files or excel files and just they are kept in the s3 bucket and you want to create a database based on those data you could just create a crawler or you can create multiple crawlers it works as a web crawler but it's not a web crawler it is it just crawls over the data source that you provide on the cloud so you can have multi source type it can have a data source or it could be used based on existing data catalog table you can connect multiple data sources like s3 not just s3 you could connect dynamodb as well you could connect uh, jdbc you could have a mongodb and other options then you can define the connection type uh, like you could have a connection for amazon vpc virtual private cloud and you could have this thing so when you scroll over there you would find a vpc currently we don't need any vpc so we'll let it default then if you choose the s3 you have to provide the path for your s3 bucket uh, if you can select a specific file, it will be better. Otherwise, you can also select a folder as well. If you want to provide for DynamoDB, you have to select the folder for DynamoDB as well or the table. Then you can have the path. This S3 path is stored. You can find this is a CSV file. If you want to scroll through multiple files, you can repeat this step. And it could read various kinds of files, not just CSV, text files or other files as well. So it will fetch the schema if it is in either in tabular format any csv or excel it will find the schema the column names rows and data types it will detect and you can also provide some exclude patterns if you want to keep them excluded once you are done with this thing uh, just hit the next option if you want to configure other things as well so you can have if you want to add another data source you can press yes and provide more data sources it could scroll through multiple data sources or if you want to keep them separate you can create multiple crawlers as well 
then you have to choose an IAM role, Identity and Access Management, in order to ac access your S3 bucket on the storage. So Amazon Cloud implements various kind of security parameters. So even if uh, you are using a single AWS account and you have got multiple services, if you want to access one service from a different service, like here we are going to access S3 using Glue, so it requires some kind of authentication or permission to access it. You can do so for different accounts otherwise and you have to define a, a IAM role, identity and access management. So you can have this thing. Once you have defined, then you can define the frequency uh, for this crawler to be scheduled. It could uh, run on weekdays. It could have the weekends. You can define a range for date. You can start, uh, define the start time or end time and so on. So if you want your crawler to span only once time, one time, you can have custom range or if you want to uh, be let it be active for a long time, you can also provide a range. You can also select a day of the month, various kind of parameters. You can select a time and filter and once you are done, scheduling this crawler, hit the next options and you're ready to create a crawler on AWS. So try to create your own crawler on AWS connected with DynamoDB or S3 storage. Keep learning and keep moving ahead. Hey, welcome back friend. Now moving forward with our crawler. We have customized our crawler. We have created a crawler uh, set is frequency to run on demand we have chosen the IAM role added connection the data source and much more so once you have provided the data source the authentication permission next step is to add a database you can create a final database where all the information that the crawler has gone through could be stored so you could just provide the name we are using the same notation as we used for S3 bucket name for Athena and here we just provide the database name. You can set various parameters for this new database like uh, you can set a grouping behavior for S3 data. You could configure various options if you go, want to have some advanced control. You can also set the resource link name. You could have the shared database suggestions, uh, the shared database and other information. If you're just beginning, just provide the database name and that's it. You don't need to provide these optional parameters and just hit next to create your crawler's output database. So everything that a crawler is span through would be stored in here. Following the same schema, you could have a create a single schema or have multiple schema. You could configure various options like uh, other things. If you want to have this advanced options in configured here, like crawler schema that it detects, you could reflect it in here. Otherwise, just keep things in the default. And once you are done, you can go through all the configurations that you done. And if you want to edit, just go refer back to that step that you want to change. So like if you want to change the frequency, from run on demand to hourly or daily basis, you can change it. And if you're sure, just create it. So here we got our first crawler in here and it's currently ready. The status is showing ready. Uh, we can go to the action to perform various things. You can edit the crawler, you can delete the crawler. You could have various things in here. And just click the name of the crawler to find various options in here. After you have created a crawler, you can you have scheduled and it will be automatically creating this data source if you want to start it just after creating you can schedule a date time just next to uh, your, whenever you want you can refer into this thing and if you want to stop the crawler you can stop if you want to run it you can change it to run so this is how you create a crawler in AWS Glue connected to S3. You can use a JDBC, a MongoDB, a DynamoDB and other data sources as well. 
it will allow you to create a table following the same schema. Keep learning and keep moving ahead. Hey, welcome back friend. Here in this lesson, you're going to learn about customizing a schema for a newly created database on AWS Glue. You could also find details about the table and database here. And you will also learn about log analysis using AWS CloudWatch. So let's start with this. We have created a crawler that has spanned through uh, the S3 storage and it has created a table and database. So we can find details about this table and view properties. You can also find the schema for this table, the name of the columns, uh, data type, and we are able to customize it. Just go to edit table and you would find various properties that can be edited. So you can set a key value pairs. You can change the properties type. You can rename them. You can customize them. You can view the properties that will be appeared in the JSON format. So if you want to customize anything, you could. You could also add various columns, rows in this table as well. It feels just like a database and if you want to edit the schema, you can edit. So here you would be able to change the data type for a particular column. Say if you want to change the schema for order quantity, we can change it from a string to binary to date to integer, float or other formats as well. We can have the time stamp. You could use uh, this change a schema option in order to precisely customize your data set. Say if it automatically detects something as a string but it used to be a timestamp or it could be a number, you can change it afterwards if you want to treat it as a different number. Okay, so here it is. You can customize almost every data type in here but sometimes it may show some error. Uh, we have successfully changed the data type for order date from a string to date and it could be considered in there and once you're done just hit save and you can update it so this is how you change the schema type of the newly created database you could create multiple crawlers that can create various databases and tables and you can go through them one by one and change the schema so changing a schema would allow you to change the database type so you don't need to go into the each individual fields and cell values and if you want to fetch the log details of any operation that is performed on this table and database you can go through the cloudwatch where you can monitor the logs cloudwatch is very important aws service that allows you to audit and create alarms find log insights various matrices and events as well we just go to the log groups and here we can find the AWS Glue crawler application. So we have created a crawler in AWS Glue and it will find the insights. So any operation that is performed in here, it will be reflected. If you create a new crawl, a new column, if you change the schema, everything is shown here. So once you go through the log events, everything is saved with a timestamp and the entry for operation that is performed this is very useful for if you are working on a with a team on a, some project with a corporation or organization uh, if there is some error or some trouble you can refer back to the cloudwatch find the log entry who was the admin at that point of time where some error occurred where there is some issues you can resolve the issues by what operations performed so it would be used for troubleshooting if there is an error it could be used for auditing purpose what operations are performed it keeps everyone accountable on aws so this is a very important service you can go through the actions and find various informations in here you can export a report on s3 bucket and it will create this thing you could also have some filters you can also delete the log but log is very important and it is a text information so it's better not to delete it 
here we got only one log string because we have this one crawler if you have multiple crawlers you will find various log streams so aws uh, cloudwatch is useful with other services it's not it's not just useful in the glue or athena it could be used for dynamodb lambda ec2 any service on the cloud to keep track of what is what what operations are being performed you can go to uh, amazon glue to find some more details in there you can go back to crawler create more crawlers edit the tables the schema and more things and if you want to run a crawler you can select the crawler and start make it running so in that case it will be run on demand and if you want to provision you can also change the frequency type and once you run you can refer back to the cloudwatch and you can check that cloudwatch is keeping track of all the logs that you generate all the operations that you perform it is reflected back in the entry you can troubleshoot this thing as well first now when you create a crawler just refer back to the cloudwatch whether it is monitoring or not if it is monitoring then you can go ahead with all the production and the real time scenarios so try to create your own glue crawler and find log insights on the cloudwatch keep learning and keep moving ahead you are going to learn more in the coming lessons hi welcome back friends here in this lesson you're going to learn about amazon athena that allows you to perform data analysis on a data set so we have used a crawler to create a data set using amazon glue and now let us go into the athena to find this data set that is newly created database and we can perform various operations such as running various sql queries so this is the dashboard for amazon athena we have to select the data source and the database it has automatically detected the athena 101 database that has been created using amazon glue we can always change the database where we want to perform the sql queries so just go to the tables select the data set and on the right hand side you got various options to run sql queries so these are the predefined queries you can customize it whenever you want so we go to the run query and preview table so here we write this sql code select asterisk from athena 101 dot data set limit by 10 so it will fetch all the records from athena 101 database and it will show you only the top 10 results you can go to the manage settings to change the location for the query result we can export this query result and store it on the amazon s3 bucket for object storage if you want to customize it just go to the aws console and go through the s3 bucket and here you can find it you can expand it here so we got a athena data 101 bucket already created if you want to store the output of your queries here you can store or you can create a new bucket we just need to provide the arn for this bucket or you can provide the link for this bucket here we have created this data set we have uploaded a csv file based on this the glue has created a database with a schema in there so here we go through this thing you can perform various kinds of sql query and operations on athena you can run the select you can drop table you can add new columns fields to this data set you can customize the data set you can perform various logical operations like filtering tables and other things here so first we need to add this location for the query result and if you want to allow it there so if it is to creates a result in s3 bucket you can always link it with other services based on that it will be computed so here once we run this sql query it produces this output the top 10 fields uh, from the table has been selected so you can change the value of limit you can 
if you don't want to have the limit you want to display all the columns you can display everything but this would be very tedious if you have millions of fields and record you don't want to you want your system to be hung so thus you can use the limit command you can customize this SQL query you can run this query you can save this query you can write more SQL queries on this data set and if you have multiple data set data tables you could join them you can create a join left outer inner joins and other joins as well using SQL queries so try to run your SQL query on the Athena data set created using glue or you can use other data sources on Athena keep loading and keep moving ahead hi welcome back friends here in this lesson you're going to learn about create and execute custom query on amazon athena and you will also learn to save multiple queries on athena that can be used for operations later on on the same database or you can execute it on other database and tables so let's start with this you already know how to write a sql query you on athena console so now just need to customize it instead of limit just put a where clause so we will check where uh, a parameter or profit is greater than 20 so we can run our query based on certain conditions we can define various conditions so it checks the condition and produces the output in the same way you can have the advanced SQL queries you can write you can try creating with the order by you can have a having clause you can use the ascending descending you can use the procedures you can create joins from the table you could have multiple tables you could use the where class you can write an advanced SQL query you can perform the DDL operations and other operations on SQL so you can find the result in tabular format and if you want to download the result instead of storing to s3 bucket you can go there you can download the result and it could be created in csv format that can be used for further analysis so once you get the output in tabular format you can download them you can use it with uh, another database you can upload to S3 use the crawler again and you can use for data visualization in QuickSight and much more so there could be multiple steps once you have various data sources you can run a crawler to have the analysis we could produce a database you can perform various queries on using Athena based on these queries the output produced can be used for data visualization using QuickSight so this is a complete flow for data science from data preparation, modeling, cleaning to data visualization and analysis. You could also find this uh, exported output as a JSON format. You could have advanced SQL queries. You can create each column and each row one by one. You could edit the database. You can insert new rows, anything else. And once you write an SQL query, you can have multiple queries as well. You can run various queries, produce different outputs simultaneously. And just next to the run button, you find this save as option. When you go here, you can save the query. When you save a query, uh, you can use it on other tables as well without any requirement for remembering it or typing it again. Just provide the name of the query. Here we provide table data where profit is above thousand and so on you can define various parameters you could have the query description and the query is saved so how you can check back your queries you can just go to the save queries options or the recent queries to find the queries that has been executed so you go to the saved queries where you have all the queries sql queries that has been saved and you can go to the recent queries that has been executed so you can find a log on athena itself for all the queries that has been executed 
and it can be used for auditing purposes and other things. You can refer back what operations have been performed and if you want you can revert back. So this is how you save and create SQL queries using Athena. Try to create your own query, keep learning and keep moving ahead. Hey friend, welcome to this lesson where you're going to learn about getting started with AWS Quick Sites. So let's start with this. Uh, on the AWS panel, uh, just move to the Services panel, or you can just search Quick Site in this option. So there are multitude of services on AWS, and we just need to navigate to Quick Site. So Quick Site will allow you to create different kinds of visualization charts and do. A lot of data preparation and complete data science work on the cloud. So let's sign in for QuickSight. You have to sign in for QuickSight with a separate account. So you have created an AWS account. It would not uh, automatically log in into the QuickSight. So you may choose the option for the beginners and the learners. It is better to go for the standard edition. It will be free. So you can choose this thing uh, for getting started. You need uh, some kind of authentication method. Uh, you would require IAM, Identity and Access Management, Federated Identity. So just keep the default options intact and you just need to provide QuickSight account name. So just provide a account name here. You can provide any information and you have to provide the email ID for notification and other things. You can allow access to different kinds of services on cloud. Uh, it could be Amazon Redshift. You can choose RDS, S3, IAM we have already selected. So for those who don't know what is IAM, so IAM is an authentication uh, service that is provided on AWS. So whenever you create some service or service instance on the cloud, you need an IAM role or policy attached to that thing. So you could have multiple members of the team working on your project side by side. So it could be a corporate project where you could require this thing for business analyst and data science projects and other so on. So you can uh, have a team here. You can also select S3 bucket if you want to store some data or you can fetch it, but you can add it on later on. It's not required at the moment. So just keep the default things here and once you're done just hit the finish button to get started with this thing if there is some error just go back and just revert it to default settings if you find you can change the region i'm using north virginia us east you can choose any option so you have to make sure that your account name for the quick site must match with the format uh, there's no underscore supported our special characters are very limited use so only hyphen is allowed here so you can use this thing so once it is created you can log into QuickSight through AWS earlier QuickSight was a different corporation different product that was acquired by Amazon or AWS and that's why we find this thing it is very advanced software where you can create uh, a lot of things data visualization charts to be very complex for finding insights critical insights that you're learning in the coming lessons so don't worry for this so you have to just go to the quick site uh, you can consider this lesson as an installation part but actually it is not an installation you just need to configure a few basic things uh, before navigating through this thing so here you can go to the quick site account and you can simply log in. It will take only this much time for if you are doing it for the first time. So once you are done, it will automatically just move it to there. You can just explore some few of the basic information that is there. Otherwise, just ignore it. You will also learn this thing. So here, this is the primary dashboard for quick site. Here you got multiple options. On the left hand side, you got different kinds of categories. You got uh, the analysis that has been created these are the four analysis that has been created by default for you to understand how things work uh, once you select any one of them it will create a visualization dashboard uh, where you have all the options here uh, it has created six seven eight eight different kind of charts the pie chart stack bar charts and different line charts 
and other kind of charts and you will learn to navigate this thing so there, there are a lot of options here you can con configure or customize a lot of things here uh, for finding critical insights from the data set so you will learning how to upload a data set how to prepare a data set for data preparation and sorting this thing data modeling that is an important part of data science you will also learn to create a lot of visualization charts and drive some insights from these things amazing visualization chart and you can also download this thing on pdf and share with your peers and teammates you can allow other various kind of data sources like uh, s3 or you can upload some file in format of csv or excel you can link with a cloud database like redshift or traditional database like sql and different things here so this will be a complete data science project you can create a lot of things business intelligence data science data visualization a lot of things with quick sight so keep learning and keep moving ahead hi welcome back friend here in this lesson you're going to learn about importing a data set or uploading a data set on aws quick sight and you will learn to create your first bi report and visualization charts using quick sight so let's start with this so this is our default dashboard when you log into quick sight uh, you got few default visualization dashboards already created for you to analyze and now it's time to upload something here so just choose a new analysis and you have to create a new data set so let's create a data set here you can see there are various options that you can use to import data set on quick sight you can use the s3 bucket you can have the oracle uh, sql server aurora db maria db you can also fetch data set from github twitter or different platforms okay so there's a wide range of options you can use it uh, using aws services or you can use the custom services so for now we are just uploading a file uh, that is generally a csv or you can upload excel file so just upload and select the worksheet name and you can hit select to create a visualization chart so this is how uh, we get uh, some data here you can you get uh, two different options one you can edit or preview data and then you can visualize so let us first visualize it so when you create the visualize option you will get this visualization dashboard created for you and here we can create multiple charts we can add it uh, you can duplicate different kind of charts you can create a lot of charts here uh, such as pie chart ring chart tree map line stack uh, map chart or a different kind of charts the got charts that can be used for a lot of purposes so for creating a chart we need to drop different kind of fields into the group or the value option so let us drop product into the group and price into the value so what is value type value that is represented using green color uh, will show you the measure or numerical values and the group is generally and the alphabetic values uh, that is generally noun names of the place categories and such things okay so if you have some numerical value it could show you the sum of values uh, various kinds of aggregation could be there some average count count distinct mean median mode such things you can show by default it is set to sum so once you put any field into the value option it will take the sum of the column and will show you on the screen or uh, with a help of chart so this is how it creates as this service is on cloud and it may take a few time few moment for creating a few charts so in the meanwhile we can create some more charts here so let us create a bar chart here we will drop uh, the same options here so this is pie chart has been created here we have four different categories of the product milk bread grapes and oranges and that has been shown into the pie chart and we have the bar chart also ready and this is how you create different kinds of visualization charts in quick sight so try to 
create this thing on your own keep learning and keep moving ahead hi welcome back friend here in this lesson you are going to learn about creating a tree map chart in quick sight and you will also learn to customize or edit some existing charts so let's start with this so we have created two different charts uh, one is a pie chart and another is a bar chart you can create a duplicate of any of these chart and remove the values or you can create a new chart from fresh so here just uh, try to create some new chart uh, you can you choose from various types of options that are there um, for tree map just click uh, on the tree map option and here just add some values so here we add date into the group by category uh, it is a date field so it won't be a number and then we add a margin into size and price into the color so we have three different parameters into the tree map so the size of the tree map entities would be defi defined by a margin and color would be derived from price so brighter the color and uh, softer the color they will be monotonous you will see it will load in a few moment in the meanwhile you can customize other charts as well so if you have multiple charts on a dashboard you may try to customize things accordingly so here on the pie chart we have some values we can see the milk product uh, milk and different products here oranges grapes so let us align them so oranges and the orange color it is uh, orange is currently shown in the green color okay so we want to convert this orange pie into the orange color we can change the values by just right clicking the chart and you can select the color of individual parameter individual category so let's change the color of milk and we can change to a different data colors there are a lot of options you can choose from so this is not a vital step for data visualization you have already created a visualization but uh, visually if you are presenting anything visually it has to do with colors so choosing a right color appropriate color uh, regarding your business intelligence and what insights you are driving is important okay so if you are showing some results from the sales result the profit could be shown in green color loss could be shown in the red color this is a well known figure everybody uses so you can turn it into that colors if you have kpis and other things as well and these are all thing so you can customize and once you're done you may get uh, some different charts loaded on the right hand side we also have some categories uh, say for example here we have four different categories for the horizontal bar charts uh, you can choose colors in a different way say if you have four categories you can choose four different colors for each of them or you can use a single color as it is shown here or you may to, if you want to highlight a particular category you can paint it in a different color say here we have four different category if you want to change the color of milk you can change it okay so now we have the tree map chart displayed it has been processed and here it is you can export this thing in pdf and download it that we can view later on uh, you can always go back to the dashboard panel in the quick site uh, when you log into quick site and here we have different projects so just go to the grocery repository one that we have created here report here and here we got three different columns so as said for the tree map chart we can find these things okay so here we can have downloaded the pdf so first you have to export your report into pdf and then you can download it and you can view it using any visual editor and so on so you can use it on a different platform as well you can share it offline if you want to drive some critical insights you can share it with your teammates and anything else like projections planning for the future driving some insights this thing can be combined and published on a various formats on a magazines or booklets research papers anywhere if you want to use it okay so visualization is not just part for uh, a business or a company it can be used by entrepreneurs freelancers anyone for personal finance or a variety of things okay so here we have created these things 
So try to create these charts and customize them. Keep learning and keep moving ahead. Hi, welcome back friends. Here in this lesson, you're going to learn about data preparation where you would be able to customize your data set, not your charts, data set. So you would be able to edit your data set, change values, create calculated fields and a lot of things that is there. So for data science, data modeling and data preparation is a crucial step. So QuickSight also empower you to prepare your data. So for that purpose, you do just need to load your data set uh, either via CSV, by uploading a file or you can use any of the available connectors, S3, Athena, RDS, Redshift, anything. And here you got two options. The first option was to visualize after you hit the select option. The second option on the left hand side is edit and preview data. So earlier we selected the select option and visualize. Now we just need to go with the edit option. So once you hit the edit option, it will create a different kind of dashboard. It is not a dashboard for creating charts. It will show you the entire data set here uh, in different columns and rows as you can find in the Excel file format. And on the left hand side, you got multiple options. On the top side, you have option for calculated field. Uh, click here to create a calculated field. So what is a calculated field? So you will learn it in detail in the coming lessons. But for now, just uh, get it. A calculated field uh, is a new column that you create in your table. It is based on a formula. Okay. Say you can create a number of rows, serial number. You can add some value, subtract some value, perform various options here. Next, there is a filter. So filter will allow you to customize the data set and view it here. So if you have say thousand of rows and you just want to show five rows, so you can show this thing. Okay. You can find a specific value here. You can drill into the data set. So you can decide here what kind of data will go to the visualization phase and what will be cleaned out. So this is also called as a data cleaning step. Data preparation is also called as a data cleaning. So here uh, we can customize it based on the serial number. Don't worry. Uh, you will also learn about filters, creating filters in the coming lessons. So this is just a quick recap here. So here uh, you can select various options. There are various options. Say you can say the greater or equal value you can define based on the number. Say here we have serial number one, two, various number of rows, say hundred of rows. And if you want to show say row number five to 10 or four to eight, it could be displayed here. So you have to define the minimum value and the maximum value of the serial number. In the same way, if you say have a data for different persons record, you can decide um, on the age criteria 18 to 35, 36 to 48 and so on different age category. You can classify people in age category. You can also create filters like male and female geography for the country, city, anything based on the product, anything. Say so you can filter out data. So this is how you can do this thing. And more you can customize more information. Here we are using a single sheet. You can use multiple spreadsheet and create a connection in here. As you can see in the data panel, we have got only sheet one. You could have multiple sheets and you can combine them together to create a joins as you use in the SQL table. People who have a background in database, they will understand it. You can create joins and such things. So it could be useful for advanced scenarios. And for right now, we can also change the data type of the field. So here we have multiple columns, say price. We can change it from decimal to integer, integer to decimal and so on. Sometimes uh, say things like if you have the country information or city information, these are the location, geographical locations. And they have been maybe due to some error, they could be defined as a string. So you can change the value. If you customize it to country specific, it will know what that it is a country. And when you want to create a geographical chart, it would be very easy for you to create this thing. It will automatically detect. Okay. So after you are done with this, you can hit the visualization option on the right hand side. 
uh, you can save and create a visualization chart as you already know how to create a visualization chart it will have a different dashboard so in quick site you have two different kind of dashboards one for data preparation modeling data cleaning and one for creating visualization chart so sometimes if you have a very small chunk of data for practice purpose you can directly go to the visualization step or in general professionals use to first prepare and then visualize so on the cloud if you're working on some decent project you may be having a, a good amount of people on your team so some people would be focused on creating a data preparation level modeling and some would be deployed on creating visualization chart driving insights so you could have some role in between or you could be having managing all these things okay and you could have multiple reports multiple visualizations so multiple people could be deployed on a different level so that is how yeah your work would be done on the cloud the data science projects is done here so try to create these things on your own explore data preparation create visualization charts in quick sight keep learning and keep moving ahead welcome back friend here in this lesson you're going to learn about creating a calculated field in quick sight so let's start with this in the earlier lesson you learned how to do data preparation how data preparation works and various options there uh, in this lesson we will be focused on creating a calculated field so just have some data set or create a new analysis and here we will learn different kind of functions that you can use to create a different column so calculated field is simply a custom column or a new column that you want to create that is not there in your data set or table and it could be based on a certain formula that is mathematical formula or it could be based derived from different columns so here we have multiple columns here and we can take a few of them so here we have a profit column a product category product id product name different uh, options in here and here just go to add calculated field and this will direct to this option you can directly write the code for creating a calculated field it will be a simple one line code or you can use different functions that are available here so here we will be using ceiling function so c c e i l would be written to calculate the ceiling of a function so here we use the profit and we will create a ceiling of profit so just for example there is a ceiling and floor two mathematical functions say here if you have a decimal value or value say it will round off it so ceiling will round off to the upper threshold while floor will round off to lower threshold say here if you have 72 as value upper threshold could be 75 and lower threshold could be 70 if you write ceiling it will convert to upper threshold okay so here we can have you can add something like here ceiling plus one you can add one subtract you can use various operations as you like you can divide one column with a different column so it will perform actions on the row basis so it will go on an individual row compare the values in two different columns and will perform actions so here just create some real values so in our data set we have the values for profit and if you want to calculate taxes for from the profit values you can just write a code for that so here just calculate the ceiling function and here just assume we have a tax rate of 10 percent so it will calculate the taxation from the profit so it will show you okay so it will create a new column you can provide the name of this column tax from profit and just write the code ceiling profit divided by 10 so here uh, this is sometimes there could be some error for you uh, so you have to just check the the format of this thing you have to put the column name into the parenthesis the function using braces and so on there's no need for any semicolon in here uh, this is not a programming language this is very simple so don't worry if you don't have a background in computer programming it would be easy for you if you're a business person or a business analyst purpose uh, and you don't know the programming it would be fine you just need to understand what these functions would do okay so here just try to do one more thing 
uh, we learned how to do operations on a measure or a numerical value and let's learn how to do it on a dimension so here we are using the concat function so concat will concatenate or combine multiple strings together so what are the strings here we have two different columns product id product category and product name we have three different columns in here uh, product id is numerical alphabetic uh, product category is alphabetic string and product name is a string so we can combine these three things together into a single column so this is generally a useless thing but i will show you how to do this thing okay so just write concat function within the parenthesis just provide the name of individual columns or the field you can say and hit the save button so this is how you have to provide this thing if you want to combine multiple columns you can combine them together okay so just explore various functions that are there and these function will be compatible enough to uh, allow you to do a lot of data preparation data cleaning and data modeling on the data set okay so it will be compatible with different things so here just write this thing we have created this thing once you're done hit the save option it will be reflected just back to your quick side dashboard here on the right hand side we got this product info and it show the value of these things combined so currently the space is less so it won't be displayed here but if you create a chart or you can expand it to find the information in there you could create more things like if you want to extract name from the email address you could do this thing and you want to combine these things so try to perform various uh, operations here create calculated fields and quick site keep learning and keep moving ahead hi welcome back friends here in this lesson you're going to learn about creating map charts in aws quick site so let's start with this so we have opened the data set and we have created multiple filters and excluded list so before heading towards visualization panel uh, let us customize some filters you may add or delete a filter or you can edit them based on the requirement for now let me just disable the product name filter and order date if you want to keep or you can change the date range based on your requirement so here you can customize your filters before heading towards a visualization panel it will be best practice to just look at the filters and exclude a list or calculated field that you have created before getting into the visualization option so in that case you will have a picture about your data so you can clarify what you want to visualize and once you're done just hit save and visualize and here we got this visualization dashboard where we can create multiple kind of charts here we are going to create a bar chart and a map chart so where there are various visual types as you can find here and based on the different fields and the columns from the data set we can create different charts so here we take uh, two values country and profit country is a dimension that has alphabetic information name of the country and profit is a measure that have a numerical value that can be aggregated based on the sum average and such on if you want to create a map chart just click on the one of these map field uh, you can select this thing you can click on the globe icon or the map icon so i'm taking the area map and here uh, it shows north america and here we have a country's information based on the canada and usa so these two countries are highlighted the rest of the countries are not highlighted because they are not in our data set right now so that's it you can customize it you can apply conditional formatting by going to the more details option three dots you can format these things so just go to conditional formatting option here we can format something based on the parameter here we take the profit measure and we change the background color and we can customize the property by default it is showing the information in dark and light blue color you can change the value of colors so here just select a condition like greater than and provide some value change the color to red 
uh, and here we provided zero value try to apply hit and here it is so any country that has a value of profit more than zero would be converted to red so in this case Canada and USA both have some information and that's both are converted to red but what happens if we want to divide them based on the certain range you can do so okay so once we put some range here like 30,000 uh, then it changed so as you can see here uh, we got more profit from USA compared to Canada the profit is generated for this thing this data set and here if you have multiple countries you can choose to go with them otherwise if you want to choose a gradient you can use some kind of gradient if you like otherwise if you have multiple values you can just choose a range and the condition could be greater than greater than equals to less than less than equals to equals or between certain range you can provide this thing and once you provide this range your things would be colored if you want to remove this condition you can simply clear it or close you can add multiple conditions like else would be conditioned so it works like an if else loop people who have a background in computer programming would understand it very clearly uh, here we have if else condition if the first condition is found to be true it will apply the color that is field otherwise if first condition is not true then it will check the second condition and if second condition is satisfied it will change the color otherwise it will go on further so here it is so we got one condition that we have added to this map chart you can create uh, multiple kinds of map charts and once we hover around our map country it will show some information in the tooltip you could add some more information in the tooltip as well you can duplicate you can hit actions you can find various options in here and if you want to customize the theme the layout of your dashboard on the right hand side you got multiple options like visualize filter parameters theme actions just go to the themes and here just select the midnight theme it will convert to the dark theme if you can choose a brighter color there are four or five by default themes that you can go with so if you feel like uh, power saving or you want to have some dark kind of theme you can use it so here we have this thing a uh, dark theme and we can change the color of individual bars based on the selection and here it is so it's better to change the color of bar uh, that matches with the map so here Canada is changed to magenta or pink color and US is shown in blue color so you can clearly identify in both charts. there's a color harmony between multiple charts so if you're tra trying to create a dashboard and report try to implement this color harmony multiple charts having same values should be categorized in similar colors so keep learning and keep moving ahead stay motivated hi welcome back friends here in this lesson you're going to learn about creating a word cloud on aws quick site so let's start with this so first create a new visual for creating a word cloud just go to add on the top left corner and add visual so here we have added a visual so what is word cloud word cloud is a simple graph that consists of different words or categories that has been arranged based on different size so the bigger the size of a word compared to other words it has more influence based on the parameters that you provide so here we have two different categories group by and size so let's drop product name into the group and in the size we take order quantity that is a measure so here we drop this thing so here we got different kinds of products such as vegetables fruits dairy sanitizer and we can arrange them based on the based on certain measure such as order quantity so let's drop order quantity if you want you can add profit or a different measure so based on different measure you can identify the product name that has 
higher number of uh, higher frequency so for example the fruits has been ordered largest time so it has the highest order quantity when we compare among different product names and after fruits there is a vegetable dairy and sanitizer but when we take about profit we have the laptop has the highest profit generating thing so based on different parameters you can arrange them you can go to the settings and customize it further say padding you can add some padding a small or medium and you can go to the other option so here uh, we have two different options a small non padding and you can go to the allow vertical words if you want your words to appear both vertically and horizontally you can check this option otherwise just leave it if you want just horizontal words so sometimes if you have a larger number of words it is better to arrange them in the both ways so it will look like a shape it will automatically take a shape you can also enable a fluid layout or disable it it's just recommended that you have to enable it so it will create a good visual just go to the more options and you can customize it further like changing the color so just select each word one by one and change the color because we don't want to keep every word in the same color it's better to use a variety of color so in that case your chart would be more colorful and more attractive if you want to add so people generally add word cloud as a visualization based on different categories if we have a lot of categories rather than using numbers or different kind of line pie or other charts it's better sometimes it's better to use size as a parameter so this is a new kind of chart on its own so if you have a large number of categories if you have two or three categories it's better to use pie bar or other simple chart so here we can change the aggregation from sum to average and other things as well and next we can try a different category so just change product name with state so let us drop state into the group by and we can also find dates as well okay so when you represent date it will look little absurd because date uh, will have a variety of dates so it will have a large range of dates it will be not easily distinguishable so it's better to use any dimension that has some categorical information alphabetic information so here when we use the product category it will have only four or five categories so it is not good to represent using the word cloud so based on your uh, insights that you want to show you can decide which parameter you want to represent using word cloud or you not so here we have states so when we drop a state into the group category and take any other parameter it will have a large number of states so word clouds is most suitable to represent this kind of information so we arrange them based on the profit generated from different states from us and canada so it looks very decent when we have both vertical and horizontal number of states and let's change the color so texas and ontario has the highest number of profit generation and here will just change the color so let's change the color from white to a different set of colors and you can use a combination of different colors and keep other informations the way you want so data visualization is not just about creating charts it's also how you represent them so visualization is an art form you can add different colors you can add your style and the way you want to narrate so just don't try to find simple insights try to represent them beautifully so try to create your own word cloud on quick site keep learning and keep moving ahead hey welcome back friend here in this lesson you are going to learn about creating a funnel chart on aws quick site so let's start with this so we have to go to the add option to create a new visual in here and we can find the funnel chart on the last second row in the central column and this is how we create a funnel chart so what is a funnel chart funnel chart is a simple chart that can show you the order or hierarchy of different categories arranged based on a numerical parameter so here we can take state as a group 
uh, or a different category we will drop a state field or column into the group by category and then we have order quantity and we'll use that value so this will create a funnel chart based on the parameters so it looks like a bar chart but it's not a bar chart it has a central axis and it has uh, it is arranged on the descending order so the bigger the bar it will appear on the top side so here we have multiple states say virginia on, is on the top because it has the highest number of order quantity and we can arrange them so the states that have a highest order quantity is on the top the states that have the lowest order quantity is on the bottom side you can arrange them or sort them in the ascending or descending order the way you want by default it is in the descending order so it will create a funnel shape or the v shape and if you have a large number of categories it will summarize them it will only show you the top 30 or top 20 that can be adjusted on your screen size so this is how you, this aggregation works you can also do some visual formatting in here just go to the settings and you will find various uh, options to format the visuals if you want to change the formatting of the numbers uh, like placing the decimal values all the commas you can do so so just go to the settings by clicking the chart on the right hand side you found this option and then you can change the title font size from large to extra large if you want to make your title appear larger and then you can change the subtitle font like small keep it small you have other options as well you can group by you can use different properties here like data labels you can show how your data is appeared like metric label type you can only show the value if you want to show the percentage as well you can add it or you can show the percentage only so it depends on you so the value is the name of a state and the percentage if you want to show and then you can position your uh, text within the funnel or outside so and you can also change the color of your font so we have a dark background so it's better to use a light color so there are various color options in your case if you want to choose it customize it decorate it the way you want you can choose a proper color matching with your requirement so here we take uh, any light color you can position your text inside the bars or you can show them outside so if you put them inside you have to choose the color adequately the way it matches let's take the white color and it will look decent but uh, i think it's better to put uh, your text outside the bars in that case it will be more readable because we have very little space within the bars and your text is not that much readable so try to arrange your text and your visuals in the funnel chart the way you want try to create your own funnel chart as well as other visualization charts using the data set that you have in the quick site so keep learning and keep moving ahead stay motivated and create good visuals on quick site hi there welcome back friend here in this lesson you're going to learn how you can create simple web application with the help of flask so flask basically is a python web framework through which you can create web application very easily and very quickly and the first thing which you must have is to install this flask library either you are using the python environment or any other things you must install it into your workplace and then you need to import it into your main python file now once you have the flask you need to initiate the app instance for your application and here you need to add some decorators as you can see i have added the decorator for routing our base url of our web application so here i'm going to define one of the function here so whenever I'm going to hit this particular base URL of my web application then it will going to run this function which is index here and here it will going to return the HTML page which I'm going to attach it to it later on okay meanwhile I'm going to add some more things into my web application this is simple Python web application I'm not adding so much options here and uh, 
to connect with any HTML page you need to use the random template option and at last you need to write app.run to run your application and uh, here I have give the, given the parameter for debug which is true here and you can see the beauty of using IDE I just created a web HTML page within a clicks and here I'm just going to add some body to my web application and yep so I have created a simple web application which is rendering the index.html and returning that particular page so this is how you can simply create the Python web application with the help of flask now the thing is which we are doing here is to create the machine learning project okay so here I'm going to add some of the options into my web page and as you can see I changed the title as well which is machine learning with AWS and here I'm focusing on the NLP NLP you might be familiar with this term which is very hot topic in the field of machine learning which simply means natural language processing so here we're going to process the natural languages and the natural languages can be anything from text to the spoken words and here I'm focused on this text okay so here what I'm going to do that here any user any end user we're going to pass and text to our through our web application then with the help of AWS machine learning we're going to analyze that particular text and return the result accordingly so here the only focus is on the NLP thing okay in NLP you can have options like you can translate any language from one language to another languages then you can extract some sentiments from it that the, the statement which is given by the user is positive sentiment or it is a negative sentiment or a neutral one so there will be lots of options which we can do here like we're going to also identify the pause which is part of speech that which word is uh, noun which word is pronoun and lots of other things which is also application of nlp here so as you can see that i have created a simple web application where you can pass your text there and here i'm going to add some more thing like select with the help of select i can give some options to the user that if you want to select this language or that language then the input text will be translated into that particular language so the very first application of NLP which I'm going to perform here is the translation of the language. Okay, how the Google Translate work? That's a, another thing. But here, with the help of AWS Machine Learning Services, I'm going to translate the input text into that required translated language. So this is all about the AWS Machine Learning, and here. We are going to discuss on various services of AWS machine learning which are related to the text part. Okay, so I've added some of the languages here. You can see like Spanish, French, then Portuguese, and uh, other than English, English is a global language. Other than it, these three languages are very much popular. And one more language I think we should give here, um, which is Turkish here. So these are the languages which are popular in the Europe and that's all. So as you can see that we got some options here in our web application. In the next part we're going to add some more things into our web application for now keep learning keep exploring and stay motivated. Hey friend welcome back in my previous lesson I'm showing you how you can create a simple web application with the help of Flask. And here I'm going to add some more things into my web application before jumping into the main NLP task. Okay, an NLP task can be your text summarization, your spam detection, sentiment analysis, then part of speech, tagging, then name entity recognition, and various other things will be come inside this NLP task. With the help of them, you can detect the spam, you can do machine translation you can add them into your virtual agents or chatbots and do some text summarizations and various other things you can do with it so here we're going to implement this nlp task and various other nlp application so let's do it 
So before moving towards this particular task, we're going to add some things into our web application. So here I have created another decorator, and here I'm passing two methods: one is get, and the other one is post. Okay, and here now it will going to work. This function will going to work when we're going to give some input to that particular input box which we have added into our HTML page. So we need to get the things from that particular box here and then the real things will be going to begin. So here we're going to select the selected language from that select pane. Okay, and here you can see the ID which I have passed here. I'm going to use the same thing there as well. So you need to first collect, gather all of the information which are given by your end user. Okay, and once you have any user, you can start your process. Now, suppose if your selected language is not none, then what will going to do? Okay, so here I have given uh, another variable lang, which contains the selected lang, which which is selected by your end user. Okay and uh, here i think we should return the selected language okay let us check that this function is working fine or not so here i'm again rendering this index.html page our result will be come goes to this particular html page and here I'm passing these two variables one is input which contains the input text and other one is language which contains the selected language and here what I need to do here is to add that particular Python variables into our web page if you're new to this flask world how to create the web application with flask you must be knowing all of the things because these are some of the basic things which you know while creating application with flask so here I have added this selected language and to particular print your Python variable you need to use these two curly braces. So let us see that how this application is working fine or not. You can see that there are two things is coming like input and the selected languages. Now I'm going to do submit. You can see that we got the input, we got the selected languages. Now the thing is we need the translated language. So to use that particular thing to translate our input text will require the Boto library. Okay. And uh, here I'm going to create a new file which is translate file which will going to contain the function for translating your language. Okay. Actually I'm not going to add all the function into one main.py it will look a little bit complex it's better to add new python scripts and adding new functions into it okay so that you will only focus on that particular functionality okay so here i'm going to import this translate and here you need to just write star asterisk which means all of the things of the translate python file that's all see you in the next class all right now in this part i'm going to create the translate function for our web application so before jumping into it you must have the boto3 installed into your virtual environment basically this boto3 is the aws sdk for python with the help of boto3 you can easily integrate your python application with the aws services not only machine learning services you can integrate any aws services within your application with the help of this Boto3. So here is our first function, our first task, which is the translation of any language from given language, okay? So here, one more thing is required, which is AWS CLI, okay? So you must configure your AWS CLI with access token, with whatever IAM rule you are using, okay? It is very easy, okay? You can easily create that access token for using this AWS CLI. Now, once you have configured your AWS CLI and installed the Boto3, 
now the next part is very very easy okay so here you can see I've creating this definition translate file here I have initialized that this particular service I want to use here and you need to give the name the reason name as well okay which is very much required then once you have initialized the instance for your translate now you need to use this translate instance to do its job so translate dot translate underscore text this is one of the function which comes inside the boto3 library okay now here i'm passing the text which is our input here so just write input so and this the source language will be the english okay and uh, the target language will be the selected language which is selected by any user using our web application so just write before um, adding this translate function into my web application let us check that this function is working fine or not okay so in the target language i've added es which is the language code for spanish language so it will going to return the result and here i'm just passing uh the text here which is a kind of input here okay and uh, you need to call this particular function that do translate and here you need to pass this text variable and then you need to write the translated text okay so let me reformat the file now let us run this particular python script which having this translate function okay we got some error here so let us figure it out that what happened and why we got this error okay we got that so let us rerun this particular program and you can see that we got the translated text which is hola okay hola monde i don't know that i have pronounced it correctly or not but yes this is how you can simply translate your English literals into the Spanish literals. Right, here I am just want to have this translated text. This result is basically in the form of JSON and here the only required field is the translated text. So I am just gathering this translated text content and you can see we got that. So now we are going to pass this translated text into our web application and later on it will going to reflect into web application okay and that's all we're going to do this in the next part so for now keep learning keep exploring and stay motivated hey friend welcome back here my first lesson i've shown you that how you can create simple translate function with this you can easily translate one language to another language with the help of aws machine learning service which is translate okay so now I'm going to do the same thing here and I'm going to add these all things into main.py, our main python file, the engine for this web application. And here you need to call that particular function which we have created and here you need to pass the input text, your selected language. But before doing this, we need to do comment all the stuffs which we have added below and uh, we need to pass another parameter which is translate here and here i'm going to add another thing which is translated text and within the two color braces you need to add that translated text parameter so this is how you can simply create the web application which will going to translate things for you just like a google translate now you have your own application to translate the things if you want to add some more languages you can check the aws official doc where you can get the languages code okay and you can see that our 
translated one is working fine so let me write some more things like it's raining and here I've selected that particular language and we got the translated text I'm not going to pronounce it because I don't think that accent for that particular language I'm going to create properly and this is for French you can add as many as language okay let me show you AWS translate language codes okay here is a translated text and here you can get the language code where it is let me show you apply technologies I don't think so that they will have yeah it, this is the page which you can bookmark it and you can get all the language code which you want to add into your web application so that's cool you can use each of them and make your own translator application that's all keep learning keep exploring and stay motivated all right in previous lesson you have learned that how you can create your own translate web application with using boto3 and aws machine learning service which is translate now in this part we're going to do some another nlp task which is sentiment analysis so we do need this sentiment analysis because you can get the emotional tone from the piece of text like the whether the sentence is positive, negative, or neutral. With the help of sentiment analysis, you can apply into various applications. Like you can get the sentiment of any movie. Like that particular movie is good, blockbuster, or a bad movie. Okay. You can get some reviews for your product okay that particular product is awesome or that particular product have any kind of defect and various other things you can get from the sentiment analysis generally the sentiment analysis is very useful in terms of marketing like you have any product and you have launched it and you got some reviews and with particular review you can decide that there is a positive sentiment of your audience of your customer or it is a negative if it is a negative then why it is a negative you can resolve that thing that defect and with improvement you can increase the sale of your particular product your movies and various other things so sentiment analysis is i think one of the most important application from nlp okay and uh, here I'm going to create the sentiment analysis function just like previous thing I've created the translate function here I'm going to create a sentiment analysis function and here I'm using the comprehend service this comprehend AWS machine learning service you can get some sentiments from the piece of text with the help of comprehend you can also get the entity pause and various other things generally it is used for nlp things okay now let us check that this function is working fine or not so just write sentiment here and uh, that's all i think we should give a another piece of text here like thank you for everything because you have enrolled this course so a thanks from my side if you're learning something from this lesson okay so you can see here that this is a kind of positive sentence so we got the positive and here you will get some of the numbers the percentage okay that at what level that particular sentence is positive a negative or neutral okay or it is a mixed one so if the 
number of the positive will be high then you can say that particular piece of text is a positive one okay so now the thing is we need to extract the only thing which you require from this text okay we don't require this whole json file we only require some of the fields so we are going to figure out that how you can extract the required thing okay so it comes under this sentiment score field and you can just write positive here to extract this value so in the same way you need to do with other sentiments as well for negative and the neutral so basically according to me sentiment will not be a count in terms of three parameter like positive negative neutral for me if any sentence if anything in if you got some review and with the help of sentiment analysis you got that it is a negative one so don't think it as a negative sentiment that particular negative sentiment review contains two things either it could be the critic or it could be the suggestion or advice okay if it is a critic then you need to do some improvement on that particular thing which is required okay if you got some defects in your particular product you need to fix it okay that's genuine and some negative um, sentiments could be the suggestion like you can do this if you're going to try this into your application then it will going to work fine suppose you have created one of your application and it crashed a lot of time okay so it could be count as a critics that your app is crashing frequently or you can take it as a suggestion that your app is crashing after some xyz update so it could be a suggestion it could be a advice and it could be a critic in all terms it is actually improving your application so the point is here that don't take a sentiment as a negative sentiment and you will be in regret feeling that what happened to our application don't think like that okay so take it as a positive thing negative sentiment is basically a positive thing for your application okay and neutral i don't think so that neutral we're going to give something for you it could be a advice or suggestion in very low way okay the positive one could be your got some compliment for your application for your end product or it could be any suggestion advice as well okay the suggestion advice will be on all three factors positive negative and neutral okay so that's all that's my thinking about sentiment analysis we're going to run this application in the next lesson so for now keep so let's get down the business in this lesson i'm going to show you that how our application will work okay that how it will going to give the sentiment of the piece of code so you got the point which I've told you in my previous lesson that the the way of thinking from the sentiment things that it could be categorized into the four forms, not in the three forms. It could be suggestion, it could be advice, it could be compliment, it could be the critics, not in these three parameters, which is positive, neutral, and negative. Okay. We are doing this because with the help of this Amazon Comprehend, you can get these three parameters very easily and after it you need to customize your machine learning model so that you can get a good analysis about your any review about any any other thing so let us write something here like hello pranjul thank you
so you can see that the sentiment which is here is 76 which is a positive sentence okay other thing is we need to pass the the score okay let me write sentiment zero one and neutral because i've created the list and this list contains all the sentiments basically all two sentiments now the thing is i need to pause it here pause equal to pause neg equal to negative new neutral equal to neutral and you need to add these three parameters in your web page as well instead of writing this the sentiment score i'm going to write in that way okay sentiment score for positive sentiment score for negative positive score negative score and the neutral okay and here you need to write boss new next sorry neg and new here so let us see that it will going to work fine or not so this is our application and here hello pranjul thank you for your patience and submit it so you can see that before we got the sentiment score in the form of list but after it we got the number the value for particular sentiment okay the score that's all this is the way you can create the sentiment analysis web application with the help of aws machine learning service which is compre comprehend here that's all keep learning keep exploring and stay motivated now here it comes another application on nlp which is pause tagging pause simply means part of speech back in our school time we have learned a lot all about part of speech which indicates the function of any word that what it mean in that sentence it can be a noun it can be pronoun it can be verb adverb article adjective prepositions conjunction interjections and various other thing it can be any of them so with the help of this pause we could be able to classify the world okay and here you can see that I did the same process which I did earlier here I have created a new Python script which contains a function which will going to detect the pause okay and here I have used this detect pause okay detect syntax uh, function which comes under Boto 3 and here comes the JSON format output for this particular sentence thank you for everything so with the help of pause tagging you can actually do some classification of words inside your sentence and why do we need this pause is like to create an application on NER which simply means named entity recognition through which you can actually classify different words into terms of entity okay you actually recognizing the entity from the sentence now you can see like for washington washington it can be a name for a place or it can be named for any person as a surname like seattle washington is a geolocation whereas george washington is the name of a person so with the help of pause tagging we will be actually get the real meaning of the sentence and this is very much required that NLP does okay so now we got now I'm totally focused on this some required field from JSON like part of speech thing okay so I'm just collecting the things from this JSON so that the output which will going to come will be in the form which I wanted to have okay meanwhile let me give you one more example of this pause tagging Actually, this pause tagging is one of the fundamental tasks of natural language processing. 
and with the help of this pause tagging you can do one more important task which is words sense disambiguation words often occur in different sense as different part of speech for example like see show a beer and here beer is a noun and another example is like your efforts will bear fruit and here beer is for noun i'm sorry not for noun it here it is for verb so i'm using the same word beer but there is totally different meaning okay and here it's rule come the pause tagging thing okay so with the help of pause tagging you can also do classification of word create any r or do some this word sense disambiguation and various other things with the help of this pause tagging and meanwhile we require this nlp to put it into our chatbots our agents so they must understand those sentences which is coming to them okay so that they can respond accordingly if you, they do not understand whatever input is giving to them the chat parts then they could not understand and they cannot give a proper response so it is very much required here as it is a one of the task of nlp one of the tasks i've discussed it is sentiment analysis which is another important task of nlp then translation and various other tasks are there and here this is the another task which i have discussed in this lesson now here you can see we got some um power of speech here like verb pronoun adjective and then pronoun okay now i'm going to put this into my main application okay so just write um, pause here okay and here i'm going to create an another instance for this particular thing and just write detect pause the function which we have created and here you need to put this input okay and here we'll be getting the things and as a parameter i'm going to pass to that html page okay i think it will do the thing in the right way which let me write part of speech and change it over here as well now let me open the index.html and where we can actually going to call that particular variable so as there are many part of speeches there so it's better to use this for loop here to mention each of them okay just write percent and person at the beginning at the very end of each statement okay and here i am actually creating the unordered list and inside it i am going to list my all the items the key which will be our the word and the part of speech is will, will be the value of that key because i have created the dictionary and i am calling that particular dictionary from here and let us check it out that it's working fine or not so in this way you can create the for loop inside your index.html okay let me run this particular thing and here i'm going to give an input text hello Crandall, thanks for your patience and here you can see that hello is injective prandial is proper now so this is in this way you can create the application okay uh i've created another application here let me do some more things like here i'm going to add this header tag so that part of speech will be easily available and see you can see here that we got some punctuation as well noun pronoun noun okay so this is how you can easily create a different nlb task with the help of flask and the boto library i think this 
this Bodo 3 is actually making our task much easier, isn't it? So I love to use this Bodo 3. Well, that's for now. So keep learning, keep exploring, and stay motivated.